Hello, Fightful fans, and welcome to the AEW Dynasty Prediction Show with me, Stephanie Chase. And joining us, making his Fightful debut, is Ibu of Wrestle Purist, aka Backup Hangman. Ibu, how are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, sorry, I wasn't able to. We weren't able to do this yesterday, but I'm, I'm happy to be here. It's uh, it's my very first video on the Fightful YouTube channel. So I'm um, yeah. excited to be here. I'm excited to to speak to the audience of Fightful. I hope some of uh, the the Hanger Hive is, has joined us today in this live chat. And uh, I'm excited because this is my first chance to talk about AEW extensively in a while because uh, I kind of stripped back on the content lately. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to talk Dynasty, to, 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 to hang out with you and uh, and the people of Fightful. So, so thank you for having me, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining me. And no, it's like, it is like getting Beyonce um, no, or something to like do a guest, but it is a boot. People are really <laughs> excited. And look, we've even got, did I just see Andy Zarian? Like, come on, you're even- Is Zarian hanging out? Up? He's <laughs> in the chat. You're even bringing the big guns watching. Now I'm I nervous. Know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, who knows who's watching when Ibu is here on stream? But thank oh you so God. much, Ibu. Um, and I am sorry about yesterday, guys. Anyone that was excited yesterday, you had to wait 24 hours longer. But I'm currently in Chicago. They couldn't give me a hotel room. It is fine. I won $100 while I was waiting for my hotel room. So, you know, that's all good. Pay for my train to <laughs> Dynasty. Awesome. But yeah, I'm going to be at Dynasty um, on Sunday. So, Let's get the hype started. We already have a super chat. Thank you, Brian Buster, who sends $1.99 to say, my God, that's Ibu of Russell Purus. My God, it is. What's up, Brian Buster? He, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, a regular on our, on our videos, so appreciate that. Yeah, it is me, Ibu of Russell Purus. Now, I guess, uh, Ibu of Russell Purus slash Fightful. I don't know. Yeah, well, your friend um, Joe Hubert is here saying, I'm here for professional wrestling podcast history. Andrew Zarian, <laughs> yo, of course I'm hanging out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> pressure, the pressure. Well, we're going to get into it. Um, it's a Tony it. Khan card, so that means we've got a fuckload of matches, 12 matches. Uh, that includes the three pre-show matches. Before we get into it, I want to remind you guys to please send your super chats, give us your predictions. And if you want to make some money like I did yesterday, then head to Bet Online, our sponsor, who we'll tell you about now. Hey guys, I'm here to tell you about BetOnline.ag, the official betting partner of Fightful. It's not just an online platform. They've been trusted for over 25 years. They boast a focus on the player approach and have built their reputation on offering their clients nothing but the best. From cutting edge technology to enticing promotions and the latest sports betting odds. Whether it be wrestling, MMA, boxing, or football, baseball, basketball, uh, or racing, anything you can think of. All major sporting events are covered by betonline.ag. Fast payouts, highest credit card acceptance industry-wide, uh, safe and secure online environments, and their live betting feature allows you to bet on your favorites weekly and easily and in real time. Betonline.ag. That's where we're going at FIFA. That's where we suggest you go as well. That's where we get all of our odds at. BetOnline.ag. Only bet what you can and please bet responsibly. Yes, BetOnline.ag. Um, Ibu, people in the comments, you know, you're never on camera, but I think it's just you're too handsome and thank you for not showing me up and making me feel insecure. I definitely would not have shown you up. Uh, but no, nah, so here's the deal. I, I actually promised uh, Monty, the uh, the head of Wrestle Pierce, I'd be more on camera this year. And I actually committed to it for like three weeks, you know? Um, right now. I have I'm not seen on you on camera on the Wrestle Pierce stream. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I started yeah. this on Worldwide. Yeah. Uh, now, right now, I'm just I'm just kind of multitasking because I'm getting ready for work, but I'm finessing and you guys can't even tell. You see, I'm just I'm being a professional here. Uh, but I guess I guess someday I'll have a, I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be more of a pro and I'll have a setup and, you know, yeah, have my face on and all that type of stuff. So I like it. I like how you just jump in. No cam <laughs> with the takes. You're like, no, no, no. You should get money to, like, just give you some more cash. for. I agree. Know, 
Or I should just, yes. It should be a negotiation thing, right? And then maybe yeah. we get, I, I get more money out of the guy. Yeah, for sure. Let's jump into this card. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to start with pre-show match, pre-show hell for my favorite wrestler, Jay White. We have <laughs> uh, the acclaimed and Billy Gunn versus Bill Club Gold, Jay White and the Guns. And this is a winner take all match for two stupid belts. The AEW Trios Championship, RH World Six Man Tam uh, Tag Team Championship. Ibu, firstly, do you know what uh, Jay White did to Tony Khan? Did he like steal his girlfriend or I don't know? I, I might have. There may have been some backstage rumblings about that. There may have been some 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 rumor and innuendo that Jay White was trying to smooth with Tony Khan's significant other. And I think it made its way over to Tony and he kind of wasn't a fan of that. He told Jay to, to relax and Jay didn't. And uh, and that led to Jay White now being in pre-show hell and uh, going 50-50 with Billy Gunn. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I guess it happens. It's a part of life. But, yeah, Jay White, he's on the pre-show in this in this trios feud, which has been going on for a couple months now. Yeah. And, um, man, I mean, what does it say about this program that it, it's gotten TV time and it's it's gotten a lot of build, but they didn't deem it worth putting on the main card. And I don't think anybody's disputing it or, or upset about it because I, I can tell you I can tell you one person who is super into this thing. It's um. It's it's very much mid card fair. Mm -hmm. uh, neither trio belt feels like uh, it particularly matters, and that's why they're unifying them. Uh, something Tony confirmed on the media call yesterday. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, look, most of the people in this match are good wrestlers, and Jay White is an excellent wrestler. Uh, I'm not really sure what you do at this point to get him out of this zone that he's in. Yeah. So. Uh, I really don't know. I mean, look, Seth, the last match he had on TV was with Billy Gunn, and he couldn't even beat Billy Gunn, you know? So It's awful. I, I, I just, don't know. I know that Jay can be, like, divisive with people, but he has been my favorite wrestler pretty much since he debuted this Switchblade character. Like, my favorite, you know, carrot under 30 at the time wrestler, right? So I followed his entire, um, you know, career, and it's just it's just sad to see this. Um, I think I hope actually that the winner is the acclaimed and Billy Gunn just as a way to hopefully get Jay White out of this hellish thing. Um, <laughs> who do you think they're going to put the two titles on at the end of this? It's a great question. I think they're going with the acclaimed. I, mm. I, I think they are um, because that frees Jay White up to do whatever you may need him like maybe they might want to plug him in as a challenger because here's the thing here's the other thing stephanie there's a bunch of singles belts now we have the international championship yeah. we have the continental uh, championship um i mean we have the tnt belt and the world championship that's a lot of championships they're gonna need challengers right yeah and theoretically jay white would be more than suitable to go for most of those championships mm -hmm. uh, so uh, just off that simple fact, I think that he's probably going to lose the ROH Trios championships, and this goes to the acclaimed and daddy ass. Uh, mm -hmm. What I'm looking at is, what's the future of the Trios division? Because, I mean, when this thing was talked about, AEW had a lot of, like, good tag teams and Trios, and, they, 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 I mean, they were the home of six-man tags. Yeah. And, um, we got the division a bit late, I felt like. But yeah. we still, like, I mean, we still got off to a great start with the, you know, with the Elite. And then the suspension happened, and Dense Triangle got in, and we did the best of seven. But, I mean, generally speaking, that best of seven was done to set the tone for the division. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we're now at a point where, like, nobody thinks about these championships. And I just yes. wonder if a change is coming on the horizon, or, or are these just going to continue to be pretty much, like, the least important championships in AEW? So, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I but I, But I do think, I think the acclaimed are winning. Yeah, I think you're, um, we got the belts when the time had passed. I think really in the early days of AEW with the Elite, it felt like, yeah, Trios Championships. And then when we got them, it felt like that conversation kind of end. And then they felt like a little bit cursed with um, what happened with the Elite. But I just know that um, the only person that's a bigger Jay White fan than me is my mom. And she, <laughs> I was watching Dynamite with her when Jay won these belts. And I was like, Oh, he he's won a title, and my mom, who who only watches wrestling when it's Jay White, went, "Well, it's a three man title. Surely that's not any good." So I was like, "Yeah, even the casuals, even the casuals." 
Uh, so, so Mama Mama Chase is a fan of the Switchblade. Oh, Mama Chase loves the Switchblade. Mm -hmm. That's so. Mm -hmm. sick. What's her favorite Jay White match? Which, which one? Which one did you watch with her that you that you saw her like going going the craziest for? Um, she likes the uh, one that he had with Omega, um, in New Japan. I think what that oh. was the US Championship, was it? Um, was the US then, one? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's the one where Kenny's like, "Fuck you, Switchblade." She loves that. Um, she loves like. <laughs> She watches, like, she'll watch all of his matches. She loved his banter in New Japan. Like, she loved swearing. So, how he was always like swearing <laughs> and stuff. Um, like, her favorite moments are like when he called Minoru Suzuki an old fuck in, in a press conference <laughs> once. Like, she loves that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, she's she just loves the Switchblade and she loves like, she'll watch like interviews with him and everything and just think he's like, he's the best. And in fairness, I think maybe he's got that market because she did show a picture of him to like women in her work that were like, oh, who's that? Is he an actor? She's like, no. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, she was like, no, this is a, this is a pro wrestler, but yeah. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. <laughs> Loves him. Um, will we will we move on? Um, mm. I, hope, I hope Jay White isn't watching unless he wants to hit up my mom. Then she'd love <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> Trent Beretta versus Matt Seidel. Um, I guess Trent Beretta should win. I oh, of course. What's yes. happened? Yeah, I think this is a, a bit of a filler one. Yeah, look, they're, they're doing this match because they want to get Trent Beretta singles when he's just turned heel on Orange Cassidy. Yeah. Uh, the big de destination there is him and Orange, obviously. And uh, Matt Seidel has been a consistent TV fixture on the BNC shows, and he's a good worker. And so it's one of those matches. They're going to go seven minutes. It's going to be well worked. And then uh, and, uh, Trent Beretta's going to get a win. That's pretty much all there is to it for this one. For sure. Then we have Orange Cassidy and Shibata versus Sheehan Taylor and Lee Moriarty. Um, I think Cassidy Shibata, just because Jean Taylor and Lee seem to always lose, but then they probably should win something at it's, some point. It's funny because, like, recently on TV, they've been, like, pretty much putting over, like, they're, they're trying to get over this idea that uh, this is the new Shane Taylor promotions and we're, like, tougher and, you know, this mm -hmm. is a rebranded re one and so on and so forth. And, like, they've lost two of their three matches since this supposed rebrand when they regained the services of a... Uh, of Anthony Agogo. So I, I, I failed to see what the difference is, but yeah, I mean, they just feel like an undercard stable of guys that just wrestle on TV and lose. And I, I don't think it's going to be any different here. I think they're going to do the yeah. job here uh, to Shibata and Orange Cassidy. Uh, we have a super chat from Kill. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. He sends $20 uh, Mexican, I think, and says, wow. Ibu has betrayed the Wrestle Purist brand. You know who I am. You don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Scott Hall style. Maybe like you're just gonna you you're gonna you're coming in as like a what's the word like a Trojan horse like take everyone away from Fred absolutely Hall? absolutely yeah this is a this is the start of an inner brand feud folks this is the start of an inner promotional war between Russell yeah. Pierce and Fightful. Let's get out of this uh, pre-show hell like like Jay White we will escape it. Um, sure, sure. We're gonna start with. Uh, another trios match, Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe versus the House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews. And mm -hmm. also we've got uh, the Fightful account saying that this is the forbidden backdoor, which, yeah, it is. And we've also been accused of contract tampering. So all good. Listen, <laughs> listen man, if, if Sean wants to, to, you know, if he wants to line up the Brinks truck, I mean, listen, I'm not, dude, I'm not going to fight it. You know, I'm all, like, I'm a carny. I'm all about, I'm all about this money. You know what I mean? So. True. I'm a carny too. So if Monty hey, wants to dump a truck of money at me, um, listen, I'm, I'm saying, like, <laughs> listen, listen, you wake me up with some bread. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking do a podcast on in anywhere. You know? So. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you have any big thoughts on Adam Copeland, Edge, Mark Briscoe versus the House of Black? Will Will Malachi Black take a pin? No, Malachi Black's not going to eat a pin, and he's going to be the least mobile person in this match. What's going mm -hmm. to happen is he's going to uh, do that kind of sit down pose at some point, and Edge will yeah. match it, and the crowd will um... chant "Holy shit!" at it. Uh, this should be a fun undercard tag. Um, Edge is just really good vibes in these matches. He very much is just like 
he's just the dad that's going for it. He's happy to be yeah. here. And he's like, he's like in wonder man, all these like new people that he gets to work with. Uh, so it, it's been cute to, to watch from that standpoint. And Mark Briscoe is a continual source of joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder what Eddie Kingston's next big direction is now that he's lost um, the ROH championship and the Continental Championship. I yeah. honestly think maybe AEW should consider turning him heel again just to just to do some new stuff with him. But um, as for this match, it's just going to be an undercard tag. It'll be fun, and um, I get the feeling the heels will win. So I'm gonna I'm gonna predict House of Black go over here. Um, I think so too. I would like to see Eddie turn heel again. Um, and maybe something could happen here to like initiate that. I think Adam Copeland, I've never been like a big edge head or anything like that, like mm -hmm. at all, but he does seem like he's in this nice place. Like he did do that, that speech that I thought was so corny and, and shit, but it goes with my kind of theory that he's like in his own little dreamland where he's like, isn't everything lovely here? And I'm really happy with all these young guys and I'm just having fun. And I do think he pulls out good performances i haven't seen a match of his that i thought it's been like bad or anything i think he's putting the work in mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i mean that's interesting he's been very heavy-handed with the like i just love it here i love wrestling like these young guys are great this, isn't this so nice and uh usually when people when characters are like that like i'm, I'm sure that's just that's just how he feels but um yeah. in wrestling storytelling like you eventually that's like done to uh facilitate a, a dramatic character shift and i do think inevitably he's going to tag with christian the question is going to be is christian going to turn or is edge going to turn but because yeah. there's such a, a gulf between like their character alignments right now like christian's a piece of shit and edge is like just so happy to be here uh i'm curious who goes in the other direction do you see christian making an appearance on the show yeah it's possible it's very possible mm -hmm. I, I would like to see him back. I would like it. All right, next we've got Hook versus Chris Jericho. This is for the FTW Championship. Um, this was added on Dynamite after Taz brokered a meeting with his own son mm -hmm. um, and Chris Jericho. And Jericho, um, n like, knocked over Taz. People were shocked by that. Um, I don't know. I think this whole thing has been shit. Jericho on here taking advantage of a young person in the business who doesn't want it and now we've got this match so there we go um i hope hook wins jericho with that ftw championship not that it means anything would be proper shit uh what do you think ibu before that k kg trey five says good to see you on fightful ibu looking forward to enjoying your next chapter <laughs> my next chapter your next chapter uh <laughs> See, here's the thing. Kevin Durant's a turncoat. I, I, I'm not a turncoat. I'm just a carny. So, again, listen, you you, you pay me, I will be here. And uh, Stephanie uh, gave me a great deal uh, to make to make this one-night appearance. You know what I mean? She backed she backed up hundreds of thousands of dollars for me to, to, to make this appearance. Uh, but, yeah, regarding this Jericho thing, I think – so, first of all, I think the feud stinks, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't understand why Chris cares this much about this boy. Because no. he's harping about, like, I I'm going to unlock your potential. Hook, you have so much potential, Hook. I'm going to help you realize it. I'm like, wh why do you care, though? What To what benefit does this give you? It's not like there's a there's a, uh, uh, some type of championship that he's trying to win with the guy or, yeah. or what have you. He just He's just so obsessed with Hook. And, and one of the things I keep asking myself every two weeks is, why do you care this much? If he doesn't want any part of you, just do something else. Why do you give a fuck? Uh, so do I can't get past that. To, to butt in, like, what if the what if the twist, the genius twist, is that Hook is actually Jericho's illegitimate son? Because I truly believe that Sammy Guevara is his illegitimate son. So maybe Hook is too, and that's why he cares about him so much. Like he found out. Yeah, look, that would be. Um, I'll tell you what, this story is bad enough that that wouldn't surprise me if they went in that direction. But uh, in all seriousness, I, I just, it's its a weird story. It's not interesting or particularly compelling. And the recent pivot is Jericho essentially acknowledging the online criticisms because now he's like, ah, oh, you know, the Jericho vortex. And he has all these new buzzwords like the rarefied air of Jericho and so on and so forth. And here's the thing. 
Jericho thinks just because he's acknowledging that people do not like him right now that that automatically makes it good. No, Chris, yeah. you know what would, what would actually not be tone deaf if you just like fucked off for a little bit because because uh, yeah, he won't. He won't. He he just won't. And so this continues to be a flat story. My prediction is that he's going to beat Hook and rebrand the FTW Championship. Christ. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think you're probably right, but that's an awful prediction. Yeah, it yeah, sucks. Um, I think that I hit this thing of like, obviously there's a lot of negativity towards him online that is kind of like both personal and both what he's doing on TV. And yeah, he absolutely thinks like by embracing it that he's turning it around and that he's now making people boo a heel character, but I still believe people are just booing, like being sick of seeing this person on TV because it's been so long. But I don't think he's gonna go away or anything because, like, no. he'll, you know, like lose his spot and he's like scared of that. And Tony just like lets him do whatever he wants. So, like, per Hook was in the firing line here. I think he like picked on Hook because he gets all these heat for working with young guys. And then Hook was one who is not like, I don't know. He's kind of like a little bit of a lower level than some of the other younger guys that he mm -hmm. kind of got he was working with. Um, yeah, but I thought like I've always liked Hook. Um, I don't think they've developed him very well, but when he was like with Samoa Joe like earlier in the year, like I thought that was great. And now he's just like stuck in this hell. And now every fucking thing's been trademarked. So I guess we're gonna have a <laughs> Jericho vortex forever. And <laughs> everything like it's it's just it's awful but i think a lot of it a lot of it falls on tony as well to just not you know i don't know just tell you, that I stop. here's my thing i think that it's one of those situations where tony i think at this point recognizes i should not let jericho suck in uh the top tier wrestlers un under this yeah. vortex and so i think he probably looked down the roster and said who do I not mind getting trapped with Chris Jericho for a couple months? And went, all right, fuck it, Hook, who cares? Um, so. Hook, then Hook, he's probably like, oh, I could, I can lose Hook to NXT. Let's just do it. Literally, exactly. So, and, and, and regarding Hook, it's tough because it, AEW is a tremendous place to work if you're already an established wrestler and you're really great. Like for example, Will Ospreay, he walks yeah. in and he fits like a glove because he's a low maintenance wrestler. He doesn't need that much creative backing to succeed because you just you literally roll the ball out and start the clock. You 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 let the bell ring and the fans know who he is and he just he shines out there. And mm -hmm. um, Brian Danielson is another example. And so I'm not saying yeah. that there's no creative backing these people, but they're already great talents. And and what's difficult because they don't have a consistent house show schedule or a training facility or anything like that. It's difficult to start from scratch and. and substantially get better and go from being green to great. Uh, yeah. And we're seeing it now with Hook because he made progress and he has the, he has the cool gimmick and the look and everything and he got over huge. Uh, but he stagnated because it's very difficult for him to take the next step. You know, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have the proper ring time to do so and, and they can't just blow 20 minutes of TV time every week to let him do that on the show at the expense of other people. So um, he stagnated as a result and the next step for him, to be completely honest, might be leaving the company. I think so too. I think um, AEW is a a company that doesn't really have much of a upward trajectory for young wrestlers. Like MJF kind of cracked that ceiling, but even people like Darby are kind of always like like a certain level. And then Tony has the checkbook to bring in like your Danielsons and your Ospreys mm -hmm. and people that we all know. Who then automatically come in higher so when it's hard to like keep moving up the ladder anyway when you're a younger mm -hmm. guy then you're getting these influx of people who automatically start at like a much higher rung than you um mm -hmm. yeah, definitely hard i think he would benefit from nxc i think they would be able to really do something with him and it would at least make him like up his stock and give him you know like a a couple of years away to maybe like come back if he decides that AEW yeah. is where he wants to be Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the other thing. It's like if he if he somehow leaves to go anywhere else and he improves as a wrestler, mm -hmm. um, if he's now like a substantially better wrestler, like say like let's say like from a zero to one hundred right now, Hook is a seventy two. If Hook becomes an eighty four, that's yeah. a, a big difference when you come back to AEW. If he does, uh, so 
And that's the name of the game, honestly. I think there should be more of that in wrestling. I spoke to someone at AEW and I said this. I said that if you're an undercard wrestler with main event aspirations um, and you're your spot on the card is not changing after a couple of years yeah. and you're also not developing. You should be, if you're, if, if it's financially viable, you should be looking to leave because Absolutely. wrestling is built on moving around, going to different places, learning new skills. The old phrase was learn a new hold. You go, you learn a new hold, you, you better yourself, you find something that works for you. And then you come back and all of a sudden now you have much more cachet and value. And that's the name of the game. That doesn't happen if you just stay in catering for a long time or you just you remain in that same spot that you've been in because that's just who you are. Uh, it's up to you to try to change who you are and redefine that. So that is literally the um, actual only thing that Jericho could teach Hook is to travel around the world like he did and and like go to different places and like learn different things and like not not be stale, you know, which is something that we don't get much uh, nowadays, like in 2024 when we have an AEW. Also, apparently you called me Monty and I missed that, but um, everyone, everyone's laughing. Did I really? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah, just like six different people saying Monty. That no way. Me. Oh my God! For for the sports people, this is the equivalent of when Shannon Sharp was on first take, and he called Stephen A. Smith "skip" and like slapped him or something. I was like, "Fuck, that's insane. That's kind of embarrassing. I don't want. Don't send me the clip of this when this is over. Please do not clip this. I will not. Um, I had totally missed it. So if we weren't live, it would have gone under my head, over my head. But like everyone else heard it, so well, let's just officially agree that it didn't happen. Let's, let's that's great. That's great. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but he exactly, he did not call me Monty. Um, okay, <laughs> we need to leave the Jericho vortex. Um, yes, we do. So that was a good conversation about the development of, of young guys. Um, next up. Roderick Strong versus Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, let's go. Speaking of NXT, uh, what are your thoughts on this one for the international championship? Uh, I think as a story and a storyline, this is pretty undercooked, to be honest. But yeah. as a match, I am, I am uh, to use a phrase that the Brits use, I am bang into this. Mm -hmm. Like it, It's Roderick Strong, who's a machine built for graphs. And it's Kyle O'Reilly, who he's shown in his brief appearances now since returning this year that he's still in the form that you'd like him to be in, uh, which is, which is, you know, that was never going to be a granted thing because you never know with neck injuries. They're super tricky. People come back sometimes and they're just not what they used to be. Maybe there's not the same level of snap, physicality, so on and so forth. So Kyle O'Reilly coming back and still being Kyle is really exciting. It's really promising. It adds another dimension to AEW's matchmaking because now you can throw him at various uh, different champions. So um, I'm into this, man. It's Kyle O'Reilly. It's Roderick Strong. To be honest with you, this is my third. Out of all the matches on the show, this is the one I'm the third most excited for. And, mm -hmm. and I do think it's probably going to get about like 15, 16 minutes or so. I think it's a sleeper for like one of the best matches of the night. Yeah, me too. I think this match is going to be really good. I think Roderick Strong, like I haven't liked his character in a long time, but He's a really good wrestler, and being in there with Kyle is going to be really awesome. Um, you know, I think they might put it on Kyle. I'm not. I don't think Wadrick's had like a memorable reign or anything, but I think it'd be cool and fresh to see Kyle hold this championship. And I'm always waiting for someone to actually like travel with this belt. Though I did see Orange Cassidy put it in the line in London, but yeah, I think I'd like to see Kyle take it. I'm not sure who wins this. I get the feeling that. Roddy wins and beats Kyle in the submission and continues to try to recruit him into the group. Right. Uh, I say this only because Roddy hasn't had much of a reign yet. He, he won yeah. the belt in the last pay-per-view and he's defended it, what, maybe two times on TV. So yeah. I, I just, AEW doesn't really do super short reigns like that. Yeah. Uh, so just, be, just based off the rhythms of their booking, I don't think he loses it here. And so what I think they're going to do is, like I said, I think they're going to have Roddy win. He might even cheat if he has to. And it'll be one of those things where he's like, you have to submit, Kyle. You're still joining us, so on and so forth. So I'm going with Roderick Strong. And guys, why don't you send in your predictions and any super chats you want during um, the show? We're about like, yeah, we're halfway through. Halfway through Tony Khan's mammoth card for Dynasty. Um, next yeah, up. Yeah, we're, we're going at a good pace. And you are. guys definitely should send those super chats because. Uh, I have to pay Ibu. 
What's up? What's <laughs> and going I, on? I have to pay. Oh yeah, you gotta pay me. Because here's the thing: how else am I gonna feed my children? That's like, true. I, I have seven babies that are very hungry, and if you don't send super chats, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have for the TBS championship, it's a house rules match. Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale with Stokely Hathaway. Um, I think I think Willow's going to take this based on everything. Um, how do you feel about this one, Ibu? I fully expect Willow Nightingale to win this match. Willow Nightingale is uh, the light of the world, the sunshine of my life. She is uh, absolutely uh, just the best. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm excited for her as a pushed figure on the top of the division. Um, I think she's going to do great with this championship. My big thing about this is Julia Hart clearly got injured. Yeah. Um, last week at the Rampage taping. And they worked around it in the tag. The tag that they had this week where she didn't really do anything except the submission at the end. And so the big question now is how are they going to work around this injury for the pay-per-view? And what are they going to do? Uh, because if she can't bump, what do you do? Is, is Willow... Kind of like the, um... Was it was it Jamie Hader that had something that was like because she was injured at one of the pay per views? Yeah, Jamie Hader yeah. had a had a bad back, and I believe it was last year's uh, Double or Nothing. Literally, yeah, yeah. It was last year's Double or Nothing, where she had to do the like the really quick job because she mm -hmm. was. Uh, so I, I could see something like that. I, they may have Willow just get a dominant win. The question yeah. is, can Julia bump? Because if it's a shoulder injury, like it, it's tough. It's tough. What are you going to do there? And and does she and would she be able to protect her on a move? So I'm curious how they get like get to a squash victory that doesn't hurt her any any further than she's already hurt. So yeah, I guess we'll see there. But but I, I do fully expect that Willow Nightingale wins this match. Um and goes on to, to face Mercedes at double or nothing. Qu quick thoughts on Mercedes so far and her involvement in this. Um <laughs> I I don't know. I uh <laughs> I don't know. He, like, I love Mercedes as a talent. I think everybody can safely agree that the, the, the best aspect of her as a performer is, is, is her wrestling. She's, a, yes. she's an exceptional wrestler. Um, everything else, is it's, your, your mileage will vary. Um, mm -hmm. She comes off like a star. She looks great. You know, she like I said, she comes off like a star. She has the aura. Uh, verbally, again, it's, it's one of those hit or miss things where it's like you kind of just kind of, you take what you get, right? But yeah. my thing is this. They debuted her at Boston. I'm going to presume that they debuted her that early because that was the only Boston day that they could secure. Yeah. Because if she's if she's hurt and she's not going to be cleared till May, I mean that's a tough one. Booking Mercedes on TV um, and, and putting her in position to just do things that are not wrestling based uh, for what eight nine weeks. It's tough. It's just really tough. So my opinion is I'm 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 very much thumbs in the middle. I'm thumbs in the middle. I think some of the angles have been pretty solid. I think there were some weeks where she just didn't come off the way you would like, you know, like yeah. the, the sit down interview last week. And then that the, was, the, that wasn't good. And mm -hmm. then the, um, the week where she was on commentary also just not mm -hmm. very good. Uh, so weeks like that, I just, I would just not use her, you know, or I'd maybe do a vignette or a pre-tape or something. So um, up and down for sure. I think again, once we get to the wrestling, it'll improve. Uh, but it's just tough to have to grind through the weeks where she's unable to do so. And I would hope that AEW tries to find different ways to um, just not, like, not expose her or not put her in position to show the weaker aspects of her game. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of that's kind of where I stand with Mercedes right now. Yeah, I'm kind of um, uh, probably, like, more thumbs down than you. I, like, I mm. really this is a talent like I was our big business when she debuted and I feel like this first um nine weeks or whatever till we get to double or nothing and she she's clear because she's clearly not um that hopefully this can be like a time that we all forget once she gets going right but I don't think that for someone that they brought in basically with their own writer like it extra hasn't gone well like the stuff she's been given to do it hasn't just hasn't like worked to her strengths and stuff I don't think her strength is doing like something like a sit down or just like two camera promo because she can come off like she's reading it mm -hmm. and very catchphrasey and very like 
up and down with the like emotions of going from saying like something really real, like about an injury or like about her brother to then suddenly going into these like money CEO catchphrases. Yeah. And this yeah. him thing. It's like a bit of a roller coaster. So I, uh, although I haven't liked what they've done with her, I, I don't think they've served her well. I kind of, I do hope that like we can move on from this once she's cleared and hopefully they'll find like a better way to slot her in because she has everything else. You know, obviously she's got the look and the star power and the matches when she finally gets in the ring. Exactly. Exactly. So it, it's really just how we grind until we can get to Mercedes as a cleared, mm-hmm. as a medically cleared regular professional wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't For know. sure. Hopefully it gets better. Hopefully, because uh, you know they need it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they need they need it in in that division. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Up next, we have um, Okada versus Pack for the Continental Championship. I think this match is going to be really, really good, real a real banger. Mm. And I I don't see them taking the championship off Okada. Uh, it, it's it been interesting what they've done with Okada. It was really hard to like predict how they'd integrate him into such a roster, especially after just bringing in Osprey. Um, it's been unique, and I have enjoyed it, like the stuff with the Young Bucks. But yeah, I think this is going to be a good match. But I don't see a title change. What about you, Ibu? No, Okada's retaining here. Um, it's interesting. I I was very impressed with how AEW clearly had a uh, creative vision for him when he came in. Like I was really really um, uh, pleasantly surprised there, because when he when he first signed with AEW, I'm not I'm not gonna say that I was like very much um, negative on it, but I just presumed because of like this is just usually how it goes. I thought he's gonna walk in as the Rainmaker Okada, the one that we've known from New Japan Pro Wrestling, mm-hmm. and he was just gonna have matches, and you know you go from there and you figure it out. And so I wasn't I wasn't particularly excited. I guess is, is the best word to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he came in, but he came in with a built-in idea uh, uh, for. They, they came in with a built-in idea for him, and I, I, I was really happy to see that. And what I'll say about his run so far is that uh, I've really enjoyed his character work. I just, I really enjoy him as this like big money signing Nepple baby that almost enhances the Young Bucks' uh, uh, yeah. gimmicks uh, in and of itself. So uh, I've enjoyed that. And, and to be, this is probably going to be a hot take. I've enjoyed that more than Okada's wrestling so far in AEW. I haven't, I haven't been blown away by any uh, match he's had so far, but I've really liked his character work. And, yeah. um, I think, I think the adjust the adjustment will continue to happen when it comes to Okada, uh, figuring out how to wrestle on TV, um, and, and getting his timing right when it comes to fitting his stuff into a TV match. Uh, this will be, he'll have more space here to kind of do a more traditional Okada match. What One thing to look for is the chemistry with him and, and Pac. Um, because Pac is very much a, he starts at second gear and he just kind of is very snappy and sharp and he works hard and that kind of thing. And Okada's the gradual escalation guy. And um, uh, I'm curious how that's going to mix. But, but I do expect this to easily be his best match uh, since joining AEW. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, these guys are great, so they'll figure it out, and it, it'll come together. And like, even the worst version of this, I think, is going to be very good. So uh, I expect a very good match, um, and I expect Okada to retain. Yeah, I think um, when Okada was a free agent, I think I, I like, I wanted him to go to WWE because I thought, like, it would be him doing something different. And it's interesting; he's coming to AEW, and he's actually he is doing something different because yeah. usually Tony does like what he did with Jay, which was just like direct transfer, like mm-hmm. oh, switchblade in a bullet club faction. And with Okada, it's like su- surprise. He's like this heel aligned with the young bucks. And yeah, the matches like they haven't been blow away. Cause we're used to like Tokyo dome Okada. Um, and I think it's kind of, it's harder for him to adjust to like making these little TV matches work because usually his non, you know, big match thing would be in like multi-mans and stuff. But I have really enjoyed the character and I think it's at least something different for him um, for sure. But yeah, I think Okada routines, I think that's a that's an easy bet. Um, we have another super chat here from Ricardo. Lil Stinger sends idiot who sends $2 to say, if Swerve wins, everyone I want to will be chump. And yeah, we will we will certainly get to talking about Swerve 
uh, mm. in a couple more matches. So thank you for that. Um, next up, we have the Young Bucks versus FTR. It's a ladder match for the World Tag Team Championship. Uh, quite the build to this one <laughs> um, that we've had. Yeah. Um, yeah. Phil, featuring Phil. Um, I don't. I don't know. Like I just. I, I can't say, like, I think it's going to be a good match, and they've added the ladder stipulation. I can't say that, like, I've been blown away by the build, but at the same time, like, these guys have now, it feels like, have fought each other so many times. Like, I I don't know. I don't know with these two. I they don't have know. weird, they have weird TV chemistry. They do. They, right? Like, yeah, it's, it, it, hmm. it's never really that dynamic. It's to a point where, because of that, they like have to cut promos on each other separately and never together. Because whenever they're on t- on screen together, and it's not wrestling, it's like kind of awkward. Uh, yeah. So it is. It, it's it's really awkward. I, I I was looking forward to this match initially because my favorite Bucks FTR match was the second one, mm-hmm. and the reason I liked that one the most is because it was the closest to just a traditional old-school tag team match, and FTR were the baby faces, and Young Bucks were the stooging, bumping heels, and so from that format and that standpoint, I just thought that worked the best for their dynamic. Um, mm-hmm. I, when they do the whole fireworks show thing, the Bucks and FTR, like they did that in the first and third match, I, I just find it very hollow, and I don't, I can't get into it. Uh, but yeah. I get into the Young Bucks just getting their asses kicked by, by by FTR. It's just a really good format. So again, because of that, the character alignments found themselves back to a place where we could have we could, we could build on the second match here. But mm-hmm. then they ruined it because they made it a ladder match. And uh, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, ladder matches anymore. I, I just think that they're very. I think they're very passe. I think they're very yesterday's news. Um, I just can't get into them anymore. And so them adding that stipulation here just felt very, like, contrived and random. Yeah. And uh, it almost felt like they did it because one of these teams didn't want to do a job. Uh, <laughs> but that's not a report. That's not a scoop. I can't say that for sure. All I know is that it, it dampened my excitement for this match. I, I mean, it's going to be good. And the people who are in a ladder match are going to love this because the Young Bucks are uh, ridiculously creative. And they're going to work hard. Uh, but I expect FTR to lose this match. I expect... Jungle Jack Perry, sorry, the former yes. Jungle Boy Jack Perry, uh, to aid the Young Bucks in victory here. So I, I'm expecting him as the big surprise on this show. And um, I mean, hell, I wouldn't be surprised if like we got a Motor City's Machine Guns uh, run in uh, as the post match after the Bucks win the belts. So that's my that's my prediction. That's what I'm locking in. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, yeah, I'm going to agree that I think the Young Bucks win. I think it makes sense for their characters. Okada's got a belt. Give these two a belt. They can continue being, you know, the the EVPs, um, running the running the show, and it will look better if they have belts. I think we'll get Jungle Boy Jack as well making his return, which I am excited for. I know, like, his reaction at um, the Windy City Riot, like, was excellent. There was all that, but at the same time, I feel like it's not as if like Jack developed this amazing character it's like more like this real life thing happened that people have feelings on you know um so i'd be interested to see when he comes back how he actually works this into being like a full-on like week-to-week character this whole scapegoat thing do you know what Mm -hmm. i mean yeah because here's my thing i i spoke about this but what we need to now find out is whether his heat is situational or not because is this going to be one of those things where people outside of Chicago are apathetic or yeah. is he going to have sustained heat in mm-hmm. different venues? And then the other thing is, look, at the end of the day, AEW fans are AEW fans. And for all we know, he's going to go into certain venues and they're going to love him yeah. uh, because to them, it's like, oh, he, he vanquished the big bad CM Punk. Yeah. And so it's like, then what do you do? Because if you mm-hmm. if your big plan was to make him this big heel and he's walking into venues getting cheered, uh, then it's like you have to pivot. So... Yeah, that's the next big step is now what is the crowd's reaction going to be for Jack Perry on a weekly basis? Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, what's going to be the reaction and just like, can he handle it? Like not handle the reaction, but like Carrie being this character that 
he's kind of found himself doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some big super chats here. Uh, firstly, a huge thank you to Andrew Zarian. He sends $20. Wow. Saying, this preview to Dynasty, great job, guys. Thank you so much, Andrew, who always does such a great job himself uh, with his scoops. Uh, Ricardo, again, another $2. As then Cody, Bailey, Swerve, Athena, Mark Briscoe, and Mox. So that's all his favorite people holding belts um, once Swerve wins on Sunday. Darren sends $5 to say, hi, Ibu. Any chance get Stephanie on WrestlePurus? And hope you well, Stephanie. Any news when your next podcast is out? Uh, really enjoy your views on wrestling. Thank you so much, Darren. My next podcast should be out hopefully within like the next week or so. It's just, I'm uh, currently like making a more permanent move to Toronto. And right now where I'm living, I'm kind of in another person's house and don't really have the setup to do it. But like that is coming soon once I'm more settled. And yeah, I would uh, always do a guest spot in WrestlePurist. That'd be excellent. Um, especially if I could get on there with Joe and Monty and Charlie as well. Um, with, of course, with yourself, Ibu. Yeah, why not? I mean, yeah, yeah why not? another crossover. Absolutely. Um, but yes, thank you guys for the super chat so far. Next up, we have the uh, women's championship match. We've got Tony Storm versus Thunder Rosa. I don't have much to say on this myself. I'll just give my prediction of like, I hope, I actually hope Thunder Rosa wins. Um, but just because I'm kind of, I'm kind of done with the, with the Tony <laughs> Crow character, right? It's it's another divisive one. It's absolutely not for me. But mm -hmm. now that I say this out loud, because I was going to say that I want Thunder Rosa to win and maybe the women's championship storylines could be a bit more like serious. But now that I say this out loud, I'm like, oh no, wait, if Tony Storm wins, she's going to have another breakdown and it's going to be more vignettes and stuff. So I don't want that either. So now I don't know. What do you think, Ibu? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm in a similar place as you in the sense that I, I'm just pretty bored of the Tony verse, and uh, yeah. I haven't been amused by this character much at all. No, and, um, it's just not what the world championship needs, and she's holding the the, the top women's belt, and so that's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not not into it. I don't think Thunder Rosa is winning this at all, to be honest with you. I think this is just a placeholder uh, title defense of the month. Uh, the big story they're telling is Mariah May and how she's kind of like she has her eyes for the championship. And so that whole thing is probably going to get paid off around Wembley Stadium if I had to be a guessing person. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, the other problem is Tony Storm as a worker has greatly been diminished by this gimmick. Uh, mm -hmm. She's not the Tony Storm that used to have these really, really, really good matches. She's somebody now that re result in them. She, um, she, What's the word I want to use? She resorts to shtick yeah. when she's wrestling. So yeah. I, I just expect this to be one of the more the, one of the weaker matches on the main card, to be honest with you. Yeah. And one that probably won't have that much heat. So yeah, I'm not into this. It's gonna go like 11 minutes. It'll be okay. And Tony's going to retain. If Tony retains, I would love if um, her and Willow would swap belts. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty nice. In, in a perfect way, right? that'd be pretty nice. I'd rather watch Willow do her thing with the championship and then Tony can do this with the secondary title if we must continue, I think. Yep. Uh, you know, that would be good. Uh, okay, next is a guaranteed banger. It's Will Ospreay versus Brian Danielson. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you even say about this? Uh, for a winner, I'm just going to pick Osprey because he's new and Danielson, he's kind like that. Uh, but I think this match is going to be incredible, but I think they've the expectations are so high. It's always going to be hard to like live up to it. But if anyone can, like it's these two, um, Osprey never disappoints, uh, nor does Brian Donaldson. Nope, no, they don't. Uh, Osprey is now a guy that you can pretty much pencil in. He's going to have a near match of the year candidate or better on any pay per view that he's given because his TV freaking ceiling I mean his TV floor right now is like mm -hmm. higher than a lot of people's ceilings for their best match that they got so yeah but th this is going to be tremendous they're going to have a hell of a match it's going to be one of those matches that you talk about at the end of the year probably um it's one of the last real work rate dream matches that wrestling has right now where it's like oh man these two wrestling would be tremendous 
so I'm super looking forward to it. This is probably most people's favorite uh, a match that they're that they're most interested in. Mm-hmm. What I'm curious about now is going to be the finish and what we do coming out of it because Will Ospreay currently is aligned with the Don Callis family. Uh, yeah. But his ethics and values do not align with the Don Callis family. And so the build has very much been this honorable one where Will is, you know, talking about how he wants to test himself and, you know, swim with the sharks and all those euphemisms and stuff. And basically he's trying to prove he's the best. And he's acknowledged that like he can't officially declare it unless he beats Brian Danielson, who's like one of the greatest of all time. And mm-hmm. so it's very much a noble, honorable, I want to beat him like a man type of thing. But what's going to happen when, if and when, you know, Kyle Fletcher and Don Callis come in and they think that Will can't take on Brian and yeah. uh, they help him? Uh, is Will going to appreciate that? Uh, so that's going to probably happen. That's probably going to be a big uh, key thing to, to, to pay attention to. I think it's going to play into the finish of the match, or at least at some point of the match. And so that's probably the next big story development is like, Will is going to probably be frustrated with the Don Callis family trying to get involved in this thing. Um, I'm not sure who wins this. I kind of think Brian should win because if if we're taking rankings seriously again and they're back, if Will yeah. wins this, what's stopping him from getting a title shot next month? Uh, conversely, um, if he loses, you can then prolong and delay his inevitable title chase. And so, um, yeah, I, I feel like that's the right finish to do and then you kind of you resolve the Don Callis stuff with Will at double or nothing whether it's a rematch to Kester or whatever it is um so that's, that's what, them doing a draw or something I don't know I don't know I think I think it's the right finish to do though it, it is Will not winning but Brian mm. is like unselfish to a fault yeah and if it was up to him he'd probably say just let him beat me so we'll see what yeah. they end up doing here that's why I um that's why I picked um, Osprey, just the unselfishness of, of Danielson, though it would make more sense for him to win. The Don Callis stuff, like, I think Danielson and the, the Blackpool Combat Club, like, need to just end, you know, their, like, association. The Osprey Callis thing feels like it was just done, the association, for the Jericho Wembley match. And then he ended up signing with them and it's like, oh yeah, we did that. We're going to have to like sometimes ignore it. Then other times bring it back. It's just really, mm-hmm. it, it just feels like it was a decision made before thinking this guy would be here for like the long term, like that he would actually like join the company rather than be like, um, a, like a mercenary figure that could come in. Um, but you have to be interested to see if they get involved and like inevitably lead to that split because I guess whatever happens with Osprey, you do need to put the bricks on him going for the title. He needs some kind of another thing that can distract him before that inevitably happens. Yeah, like a, a, just something to delay it because, again, especially now that there's rankings, mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to – to pretend that he's not at the top here when he's yeah. won every, if I'm, unless I'm mistaken, he's won every match. He's wrestled very frequently on television mm-hmm. and a, a win off Brian Danielson after rattling off what five straight wins or something. Like you would think he's squarely like he has the inside track to be the next challenger. So, but I, but I, I'd imagine that's not the direction for double or nothing. So um, yeah. they're going to need to, they're going to need to push him back with some type of setback. All right. We're on to, the final match of our show. So we'll be wrapping up soon, guys. So if you have any super chats or any comments you'd like me to read out, please get them in now as we go to our main event, Samoa Joe versus Swerve Strickland for the AEW Championship. Uh, Ibu, I'm going to let you start on this one. How have you found the build and Swerve's journey to potentially winning the title? It's weird. I feel like they're doing on on paper they're theoretically doing all the right things. Mm-hmm. Mojo is cutting heel promos and they're setting up Swerve to be the first Black AEW World Champion. Uh, I just I'm struggling to get that into this, and I I'm, I've been trying to figure out why, and I, I'm really not totally sure because Swerve winning is the right choice. It's something that 
should happen. It's something mm-hmm. that we've most fans have collectively collectively wanted. Most fans have pegged Swerve as the next world champion of AEW as early as what maybe last November. Once yeah. he really cemented himself as like a main event player in, in that Hangman Page feud, most people were like, "Yeah, man, he's the next champion." And and so it's weird that we've now arrived at this point, and, and I, I just feel I feel weird about it. I just feel like I'm not as excited as I I thought I'd be, and 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 I've been trying to explore why I feel that way, and I wonder is it because Will Osprey has indirectly kind of outshined him and, and and made himself clear as like the next big champ. And am I just now already looking ahead to that? Is it the build? Is it whatever? I'm not totally sure, but what I'll say is this. I think we maybe have been spoiled by the fact that his chemistry on screen with Hangman Page was so great that him yeah. being with anyone else feels like a step down. Mm-hmm. I loved his stuff with Hangman and, and Samoa Joe is world class. He's like one of the greatest wrestlers of all time to me. And, uh, but his di- their dynamic just doesn't feel as um heated or tense as, as like it, it just doesn't feel uh i don't know Do you think it, it's because joe is ca- basically a tweener because people will always like joe and he's like badass it feels less like swerve is defeating like an actual heel or like an actual villain or someone that's like i know joe has said some stuff but like done anything personal to him, which you could have done with Hangman. Yeah. Joe, that's yeah. the thing. The personal stakes aren't as high. Mm-hmm. Samoa Joe's a tweener that people cheer for. And Swerve, I mean, I mean, he's he is a baby face, but he's 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 basically been like a heel or a heel leaning tweener for months. And so that that kind of hazy dynamic I think affects it. But between that and the fact that Hangman Swerve felt like two men that wanted to kill each other. And this mm-hmm. just kind of feels like them doing the best with these, the pieces that we have. Um, maybe that's affecting it. But with all that said, look, I, I'm looking forward to this. I thought that I don't think they've done anything mechanically wrong when it comes to building this match. I thought the, I thought the contract signing segment was really, really, really good, and yeah. most of the promos have been strong leading this. Um, I expect the, I expect a good main event here, and I expect Swerve to win the match, and it's going to be a great moment. Um, I was just trying to articulate why I'm not. Um, I'm not like just bouncing off the walls for this. I don't know if anybody in the comments agrees with me or, or, or kind of gets what I'm coming from here, but that's kind of where I stand with it. But I, I expect Swerve to win the match. Um, I like picking up on what you said of like w- w- him with Hangman showed us like how how good something could be. I think for me in an in an ideal world, if Hangman wasn't you know ever like taking weeks off or whatever, um, I thought him and Hangman were telling a really good story because hangman to me is like hangman is aw right like like aw is like hangman's story like at least the first five years um him being this guy that couldn't win the title at the top and at the start and then we watched his whole journey till him eventually winning it from omega and then he ended up back being like a little bit unsure of himself and then he got locked into this feud with swerve and then swerve tells hangman that he got like all these opportunities um, and he kept getting opportunities um and like what have you done with them and he said that to hangman at a point where like yeah hangman was looking like what happened to hangman mm-hmm. and if you totally disregard the the home invasion stuff i'm just gonna forget about that and like that's a really <laughs> good story because to me yeah it's totally completely right to say that hangman gets a lot of opportunities that swerve didn't but then hangman he always came across as so likable that it's not like you're saying this to like a bad person or like a you know an evil person that's actually you know manipulating people but then i thought like the way their storyline was going you could have done a really good like double turn where swerve does become the full baby face and then like hangman turns so if Hangman had won the triple threat and taken the title from Samoa Joe, I think you could have told a really good story where like that makes Hangman heal because he becomes the champion and then, you know, tells Swerve that like, oh, he did it and you had the op- that opportunity, but I'm the one that actually won. And then I think they could have had a really good feud leading to Swerve beating Hangman for the championship and then maybe Swerve winning it, feeling like this great moment like it did when Hangman won at full gear, you know, kind of like that big, like baby face, like 
cathartic moment. Um, maybe that was, I don't know if you followed all that because I don't think you I know, I, 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 I do. That's the thing. It's, it feels like Hangman was like the final thing here. And mm -hmm. I wonder how much of this got affected by Hangman having to take time off. Yeah. Because it does feel like, at least to me, it feels like Hangman was supposed to win at Revolution. Mm -hmm. And maybe we, we we then extend this to a month for a singles match with them to where where sort of wins or something like that. Like yeah. it just it just felt like he was part of the conclusion of Swerve's story because mm -hmm. he had been the main fixture of Swerve's story as a main event wrestler. Um, I mean he he was the guy that sort of went face to face and said, "I want your spot." That's how the story yeah. told him, "I want your spot. You don't want it. You're not hungry enough. You haven't really done anything with it, and I want to take it." And now we're getting to the moment where. This is being actualized. It's being realized. Sword is finally becoming the guy, the guy that he declared he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And the man standing across from him is not Hangman Page. It's Samoa Joe. And I yeah. mean, Samoa Joe's a fitting substitute for anybody because he's world class. But I think the fact that it's a different person just kind of feels a little weird because that's not the story they were telling. And again, that may just be because of real life circumstances. And again, Hangman Page is taking time off. The rumor is that he's becoming a father or something, but All right. it, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, who knows, but I think that's part of the reason why I kind of feel weird about this, but with all that said, with all that said, I'm still looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to Swerve's win here. And uh, I think they could have a really good match. I think it's going to be really heated for Swerve and it's going to be cool to see him crowned. Uh, we have a super chat here from um, Mustafa Siddiqui, who says, Osprey coming in feels like The Rock arriving as a top baby face before Austin wins a big one at WrestleMania 14. Swerve's awesome, but Osprey is the ace. I think um, I think it's just unfortunate, the timing of Osprey, because, like, I, I think Osprey is obviously, like, one of, if not, like, the best wrestler in the world. But like, I really like Swerve and his character. Like I like the entire package of Swerve. And it, it does make me sad when I see a lot of the conversation being about Swerve winning this weekend. And then, oh, but he'll drop it to Osprey at Wembley. Like he's got an expiry date already on his reign. Yeah, people are already looking ahead, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, it's, it's both sad and I just like I don't like anything to be you know inevitable I want to I would love to see like what Swerve can do with a whole bunch of different people but it feels so much like people are just looking to Osprey winning it at Wembley that that's kind of sad it's like not something that you actually see that often like someone winning a championship and then kind of everyone well believing that they know when they're going to drop it like exactly when and to who and I would hate for like Swerve's reign to have that on it, you know, people waiting for him to drop it, like waiting for that moment because he deserves this moment so much and he'd be such a great champion for AW to have. It would really feel like the next phase of AW because um, I would, I still can't like MJF kind of like in the original bit and then Samoa Joe maybe feels like a bit of a bridge and mm -hmm. Swerve could kick off something new, but I just don't, like, I hear that idea of, like, an expiry date, oh, he is going to lose at Wembley, and obviously, like, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, anything could happen between now and August, but it just makes me, you know, sad to think about it. Yeah, yeah, I I, I, I totally get where you're coming from there, I just, yeah. uh, I do think when he walks out on that first dynamite with that championship, it's going to be really nice, it's going to be special, mm -hmm. My, what I'm curious about is how this reign is going to come off in these next few months and yeah. who are the people he's going to fight with because um, yeah. like think about it who, who are Swerve's challengers going to be like is he going to face uh, I would love it to be Jay White like I know like some people do that. don't want to but I think that would be a great way to build Jay up again Jay mm -hmm. Swerve promo on each other and I'm not saying that Jay beats him that's not going to happen but I think he'd be a good person to help like make Jay into something again after all this Billy Gunn shit. That's the thing. It's like, th this is what we talk talked about earlier, is Jay White is a perfect person you could plug in to challenge for the numerous <laughs> singles championships that are on the show. For and sure. so, you bringing up that idea, like, I'm like, yeah, of course. And Jay White, mm -hmm. sort of like, let, let's do it. Uh, so, I, I'm, I'm down for that one. I'm, I'm curious who they have lined up, but I, I do think Jay White would do a good job with it. 
Uh, we have a super chat here from Ricardo who sends $4.99. Thank you. With call out MJF needs a feud. Thought, thoughts on him costing Joe to set up a trilogy match could follow that with that teased swerve feud. I'm not ready mm. for him to come back. I'll just put that out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't really know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I also get this weird feeling he's not coming back just yet. Me too. Uh, uh, well, certainly with those dates that have been announced, you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not I'm not sure about that one. Uh, we have $10 from Black Yakuzu. Mm -hmm. Sorry, 94. Really sorry. Um, Osprey and Okada and no hangman really hurts Swerve, in my opinion. It's not his fault, but it's a factor. He'll probably win, but it feels more of a formality than a crowning moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, that's kind of what I was getting at too. Is it, it um, the formality aspect of it kind of feels weird? It feels like we already knew this was going to happen for months now, and so mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's just it's just weird. But I I don't want to I don't want to come off like I'm um, just uh, dismissing the moment though because it's still a moment yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, no, I I know what you mean. It is it is going to be um, a, a great moment, and mm -hmm. I really think he's gonna do so well as champion and who knows like he might do so well that it changes what people think is gonna happen in the future mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. and yeah nothing is you know nothing set in stone because so many things can happen but i do think yeah it is going to be a great moment regardless of what they maybe could have done to make it even bigger mm -hmm. um we have a comment from Andrew Zarian, who says, I wouldn't mind seeing Danielson and Will go to time limit draw and they go for double or nothing. Yeah, I was thinking maybe time limit draw is a way to get out of it, especially with those two guys. Time limit draw works in the sense that, um, like I said, Will Will can't challenge for the main belt right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, with, with Brian, I, if you want to do it to build to a rematch, like go for it. Because like I said, this is one of the last work rate dream matches we have left in wrestling. Yeah. And, but, but I, I think Brian still has a couple more months left in AEW, at least in this full-time run here. So if you want to get two out of Will Ospreay, like go for it and get two out of Will Ospreay. It'd be a good um, thing to keep him going until, you know, Wembley. Yeah. In uh, the downloads and stuff. Um, so we're both decided then Swerve is definitely winning. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I, I believe that was the plan. Um, and if he doesn't win, then that meant that a plan was changed along <laughs> the way. For sure. Uh, we got one more super chat here from Ricardo499. Thank you so much. Do you think AW would benefit from hot potatoing the title for a bit? Attitude era at WWE saw very few long title wins. AW so far hasn't had quick runs. I mean, I'm not a fan of hot potatoing uh, the world title myself. So I don't mm. think I don't think it would benefit from it. Yeah, I don't mind lower card belts being hot potatoed, in the sense that I think modern wrestling is overcorrected, because there was definitely a time I remember when I was a kid, mm. wrestling championships were, were switching hands all the time, and um, we've overcorrected, and now we have all these super long reigns, and um, so like if an international belt or a continental now let's say like the international belt, if that has two to three month reigns like that's totally fine to me yeah the world title I, I i'd be hesitant to do something like that same for sure okay i think that is everything um mm -hmm. ibu this has been awesome thank you so yeah. much for joining me um i it was so great to to hear your insight on everything and get to discuss these matches with you and thank mm -hmm. you everyone in the chat Everyone that's in Super Chats, everyone watching. But, yeah, a really great show. And thank you so much, Ibu. No, thank you for having me. I, I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope people enjoyed the show. Um, I was surprised at how we were able to cover this whole thing in, like, an hour. Like, I'm just really impressed by that. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a, that's a testament to you and your hosting. So, Stephanie, okay. thank you so much for having me. And, um, guys, if, you, if you're unfamiliar, just follow me on Twitter at uh, Backup Hangman. So. Backup. No one is unfamiliar with Backup Hangman. What are you oh. talking about? I don't know. I don't know about that. It's a, it's a different audience, you know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Follow Ibu at Backup Hangman and follow Wrestle Purists on YouTube. They review everything 
Mm -hmm. I particularly love like their Dynamite review is always great. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have great shows, uh, Wrestle Pierce Worldwide. You get and you get a lot of scoops from Ibu as well on these shows. So they are absolutely worth following and supporting over on YouTube and their Twitter as well. Uh, one more super chat before we go. Um, Jaden says, Swerve should be healed with Hangman as face chasing. Um, it's too late now for that. Yeah, opinion. that is too late. That, I think that ship is sealed. But thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you, Ibu. Yes, everyone go follow Ibu. Follow Russell Pierce. I hope this isn't the last time that we're together on screen like this, Ibu. No, I don't think so. You can listen again. I'm, uh, it's all about schedule for me. But uh, if you catch me on a time where I'm free, I'm down to pop up anytime you want. Awesome. And once again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much to Rob, who's been in the back doing all the producing. Um, and hopefully he's around to hit the end button. <laughs> <laughs>